If someone fired a missile towards your plane and missed, would you get on a plane again? One of the most influential women in rock, Joan Jett, part of the all girls band The Runaways, which she helped form in the 70s. She's been inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Joan also made the Rolling Stone 100 Greatest Guitarists of All Time list. Rolling Stone hated The Runaways. Here are five insane facts you might not know about Joan Jett. I've had my head split open by a beer bottle, a rib cracked, a battery thrown at me. Joan received unimaginable physical and verbal abuse. In fact, every member of the Runaways did. The crowd initially welcomed them as a cute novelty act, but when they realized that the Runaways meant business, that they could play and they were good at it, they turned fucking hostile. It quickly went from how cute to slut, spitting and throwing things at them. Their manager at the time, Kim Fowley, even trained them to take abuse from the crowd by throwing things at them during rehearsals that they called target practice. Joan says that by the end of their live shows, she would be dripping in spit. She once got knocked over on stage by a bottle to the head, but she got back up and kept playing her guitar. Although she would hold her head and cry out of sheer frustration after each performance, Joan refused to be scared off stage. She said that unless she was physically knocked out, she would not back down. Joan hit rock bottom and then completely turned her life around. She was already knee-deep in smoking drugs and alcohol during her time with the Runaways. When the band split, Sandy West, the drummer, battled with drugs and alcohol. She became a drug runner and dealer's bodyguard, even carrying a gun. She was arrested and jailed repeatedly for driving under the influence and possession of illegal substances. Shari Curry, lead vocalist of the Runaways, Trouble with drug addiction too, but then subsequently became a counsellor. Joan took the split badly as well. She was scared and depressed and succumbed to a lot of alcohol and wild parties. She was in a bad place. And she says that she could accidentally wind up killing herself. For several weeks during her depressive state, she even considered signing up for the military just to learn some discipline. More on this later. Joan was then hospitalized for a serious heart condition, following which she was able to get her career back on track with her now longtime manager, Kenny Laguna. She built some solid healthy habits like biking, exercising, even knocking out 50 push-ups during commercial breaks. She quit smoking and drinking and even converted from being a major carnivore to vegetarian. In the late 80s, she cut out the breakfast food like pancakes and muffins that she would always have on tour and now prefers grilled vegetables, plant-based Beyond Burgers and Indian food. Joan is way more conscious about her health now, getting enough sleep, taking her vitamins and eating well. But she contributes her insane abs and toned body to her physically intense stage performances and constant touring. Joan had to undergo surgery. Joan attended fantasy training camp with baseball team Baltimore Orioles. In the early 90s, when if you're a fan, you get to spend a few weeks spring training with them. You'd get a uniform, have teams, play two games a day, and get coached by major league coaches. Joan learned how to throw a screwball from a famous screwball pitcher. She says she was iced up every night. Her leg, both shoulders, and she probably ripped her rotator cuff. But she said it was awesome. She'd go crazy throwing the ball as hard as she could. But then after, she couldn't pick up anything without her arm going numb. And it started happening on stage. Being a tomboy her whole life, coupled with her incredible guitar slinging performances, all led to Joan developing shoulder problems that required surgery and physical therapy. She says cannabis was useful in her recovery and pain management. If you love listening to inspiring stories of fit rock and metal musicians, come over to the dark side. Big thank you to all my subscribers for helping me to continue bring out these inspiring stories to the world. Joan hates war but loves the military. Joan has regularly performed for US troops based in combat zones, including Bosnia, Japan, Iraq, Kuwait, and even the southern Afghan city of Kandahar for about 2,000 troops. In fact, she's participated in over 60 events for the military to raise their spirits and boost their morale. Joan feels a deep connection with the US military, as she had, if you remember at one point in her life, seriously considered joining the military. Her closest brush with death, right after the dreaded 9-11 incident, Joan went to perform for troops in Pakistan and Uzbekistan. As they were flying in, an electronic voice went off. Warning, missile launch. Warning, missile launch. The Taliban had apparently fired a fucking missile at them. They braced for impact. Joan waiting to see if the back of their plane would blow up. Somehow they landed safely and lived to tell the tale. Tell me I can't do something. 
No, I'm gonna be doing it. Joan got her first guitar when she was 13. Wanting to play rock and roll, her dreams were shattered when her guitar instructor insisted that she learn how to play folk songs. Girls don't play electric guitars. On top of a smoking, all covered with snow. That didn't stop her though. She quit after one lesson. Joan bought a self-learning guitar book and also started learning by Yo, practicing tracks like Deep Popo, Free, T-Rex and Black Sabbath. By 15, she started professionally as a musician on the road. Then, after Joan pulled herself out of depression, following the runaway split, she continued to produce music. She sent her music to 23 record labels, big and small, and got back 23 rejection letters saying, You can't sing. Lose the guitar. The rejection prompted her to become the first female performer to start her own record label. So once they rejected the music, we went on our own. Joan and her manager sold records from the trunk of their car. And they had four hits, one of them being I Love Rock and Roll that was number one for eight weeks. Until they became really successful and started selling by the thousands. Fun fact. Joan was an executive producer on the 2010 movie based on the story of her first band, The Runaways. Joan handpicked Kristen Stewart to portray her in the movie and worked closely with the actress on her voice, physical mannerisms and stage performance styles. Well-behaved women seldom make history and Joan Jett's toughness independence and tireless work ethic has rightfully earned her titles such as the godmother of punk and the queen of rock and roll. Moral of the story? There will always be someone who went through worse shit than you and persisted to follow their dreams. So don't fucking quit. Despite her shoulder surgery, Joan continues to tour extensively. Did you know of this other guitar goddess who is recovering from knee surgery, Nita Strauss, touring guitarist for Alice Cooper, is an incredible athletic stage performer. Will her surgery impact the way she performs? Go find out right here.